Hello, how are you today? I wrote this essay a little bit ago. It's called A Barrel of Cosmologies, A Theory on the Creative Process. And it's very much a theory. I don't have any, I guess, sources to back my claims up. But it's an interesting idea nonetheless, and one that I'd like to share with you today. Let's begin. This essay is a dichotomy of different cosmologies in which the creative teenager and child typically go through before reaching adulthood. I'm certain it varies from person to person, but having only lived one life, this essay describes my personal journey in particular. But through acute observation of myself, I've categorized my cosmologies into different phases in which I'm pretty sure are universal, but perhaps not. The phases are these. Play, make-believe, inspiration, hope, creation, delusion, and then hopefully reality at the end. In the beginning, it is majoritively fun. Rough and tumble play is generally done for fun. At its end, towards the reality phase, the process is majoritively applicable. It goes from fun to real world application. And hopefully still fun too. None of these phases really have an end. They all play into each other. I'm simply describing new beginnings when I'm mentioning these phases, not necessarily ends. Anyways, I'm writing this in hopes to bring the hidden aspects of the creative process to light. I hope that this description of the creative process can, you know, get people out of their heads a little bit. And in a good way, not in a non-creative way either. Some people never quite make it out of the delusion phase, so I hope this paper can help with that. I once read a book entitled Masters of Doom. This book was about two programmers, both of which grew up at the start of the personal computing revolution. On their Apple IIs, and with knowledge gained from their tome-like basic manuals, they delved into the command line and designed 8-bit worlds from scratch. They were later part of the founding of id Software, and quickly became rock stars of the gaming industry. This inspired me. A similar coming to story was that of my own father, who taught himself to play the bass at age 15, I believe. And when he left home at a young age, he used his bass skills to inspire bar crowd after bar crowd, meanwhile singing songs of distant worlds and sword and sorcery apocalypse scenarios. These teenage years were spent delving into the works of Tolkien and channeling that inspiring energy into his written music, much like how Tolkien's elves channeled Eru Iluvatar's essence into their handiwork. The normal teens and adults of the 1970s often mistook my dad's creative edge, as we'll call it, as wizardry. The greatest generation and baby boomer parents of that era were very grounded in the practical from what I've heard, and the generational leap between that practicality and the mysticality of young musicians and Tolkien fans often typecasted those young fans as wizards. Schools have their roles such as nerds, geeks, and jocks, and wizards typically found themselves in the nerd category. Back to Masters of Doom, I once found a review for it online and thought it was so integral to the understanding of the wizardry of the book that I printed it out and used it as the bookmark. It is this. To my taste, the greatest American myth of cosmogenesis features the maladjusted, antisocial, genius teenage boy who, in the insular laboratory of his own bedroom, invents the universe from scratch. Masters of Doom is a particularly inspired rendition. It was written by Mark Lehner, author of I Smell Esther Williams, if you're interested in knowing about him. Anyways, I inherited my dad's wizardry. Being a teenage boy, I often spent most of my time in my insular bedroom, as much as the quote uh, references. I wasn't as active as I wanted to be, and I could have definitely exercised a little bit more, but I was never lazy. I suppose most of my own wizardry came from my surroundings. I was raised around Tolkien, 1960s and 70s progressive rock music, and I tried my hand at writing similar mythopoeic prose to much success. Masters of Doom showed me that this creative spark that I found with myself was not limited to just writing and music. It could be found within programmers, engineers, architects, and visual artists as well. So in my own life, in the lives of most creative individuals I have observed, this process of divine inspiration starts with play.
The rough and tumble play of childhood often turns into the engagement of full-on sword and sorcery quests that involve lots of running around and waving of paper towel tubes as swords. This is simple make-believe at its best. This analogy can be done with superheroes as well, but for this paper we're sticking to classic fantasy troops. Play can hopefully eventually evolve into inspiration. The small snippets of hero myths and tales of dragon slaying that we picked up as children begin to come clear. We start, perhaps, to understand why they were written. We begin to know their purpose. The more and more we rough and tumble play, the more and more it affects us as individuals. It has an applicable role within our lives, and so, if it has a, an applicable role within our lives, perhaps that role was purposefully initiated. We start, perhaps, to wonder why they were written, and ourselves seek to be like the protagonists within those stories on a personal level. More so than in just pretend. This happens when we begin to look up to those characters and seek knowledge from their roles and their courage. The hope phase comes next. Some people could call this false hope, but I call it childlike wonder. Often, as a child, I would walk through the woods, hoping to turn a corner and find myself in Middle Earth or Narnia or some other magical world by some kind of fluke of universes crossing paths at just the right time and just the right location. My dad can confirm that he did the exact same thing as a kid and as a young adult. It is the hope of our world converging with a fantasy one that drives us to seek meaning in our life and eventually stir that same wonder into our own works of creation so that others may feel the same thing. For there is no greater adventure than that of creating and overseeing a tiny little world of our own. That describes the creation phase. This phase is the most rewarding, I would say. It completes our desire to add to the beauty of our world, to the world that we started aimlessly seeking within the hope phase, while also expressing our deepest desire in our own unique ways. Some people are innately born within the creative phase, while others must go through all the previous phases to reach it. Some people settle in the creative and become writers, painters, musicians, and architects right off the bat, while others go through the delusion phase. The delusion phase typically happens the younger the creative is, depending on how fast they went through the other phases, of course. So it happens the younger the creative is, typically while they are still developing emotionally. It is by no means a bad thing to intertwine one's persona into their own creative works, but it is a bad thing when someone takes their work too seriously and uses that as their persona. This was experienced by me a little bit as a teenager, who had nothing better to do all day than to think. I would often pretend to be characters within my various worlds, and unfortunately I often pretended to be a very successful author instead of trying to become a very successful author. Oh well, I learned. The reality phase is when a creative product comes together to enhance the lives of others and eventually inspire them to finish the creative journey that begins within us all at the rough and tumble play of our youth, a full circle. Within each and one of these phases, we are subjected to different worlds from different authors. While in and of ourselves we are creating or modifying our own worlds from the inspiration in which those authors sparked within us. Whether our own worlds be an expression of our subconscious or are simply just a swashbuckling pirate tale, they can all come to inspire those who read them. But one thing is true, the creative process works differently within different people, and informs and shapes how individuals view the reality, some for better and some definitely too delusionally. But no matter at what stage in the creative process you may be in, never stop hoping. I would say the hope phase is the most important, Never stop hoping for Gandalf to appear suddenly before you, beckoning you to adventure. Never stop hoping that maybe you'll just enter Narnia by some fluke. Never stop hoping, and certainly never stop creating. Never stop instilling that hope in other people either. Anyways, um, I hope you have a good day. I don't really have anything else to add to this. Um. Anyway, stay tuned for more on my Steadfast Variation blog and channel, and I hope you have a fantastic day, and um, yeah, so that's it, see ya.